us for worship this morning. How awesome is it to be, uh, let's see, I can see all kinds of red and blue out here. This is crazy. Um, how awesome is it to be here on July 4th, right? Amen. Amen. Um, check your bulletins for uh, announcements. There probably isn't a lot this week. I know this is meeting week. I'm not sure if trustees are going to meet tomorrow or not. I highly doubt that. I know SPRC is not. Uh, finance is at 6.30. Uh, on Thursday, and ad counts will be at 7 on Thursday. Uh, outside of that, I think we're still doing lunch at the park. Uh, our week, this is our week as the Graf United Methodist Church to do lunch at the park. So if you are available, 10, 10, 30 to come over and help prep, and then go over and serve lunch at the park, you're more than welcome to join us and get free lunch in the process. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's just about it this week. So if you are able to stand, I would ask you to stand and join us in our opening, which is the Star Spangled. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight. Broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting. my children and my wife I thank my lucky stars to be living here today cause the flag still stands for freedom and they can't take that away and I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free and I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me And I gladly stand up next to you And defend her still today Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA From the lakes of Minnesota To the hills of Tennessee Across the plains of Texas From sea to shining sea From Detroit down to Houston And New York to L.A. Where well, there's pride in every American heart And it's time we stand and say An American Where at least I know I'm free And I won't forget The men who died Who gave that right to me And I gladly stand up Next to you And defend her still today Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God 
Give us the courage to love one another, to share with one another, and to hold each other up. Provide the strength to forgive and the courage to do that which the world will not do. Love our neighbors as ourselves. In the name of Jesus the Son, through the power of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. You may be seated as you guys are heading down. Uh, just to let you know, there are bulletins out here on the seats. I did not get one, so I have to grab one real quick. I was like, I don't know what comes next. I don't have anything to look at. I was flying by the seat of my pants. And I was standing, so wait, that doesn't make any sense. There we go. Oh, yeah, see him, amazing grace. So you've got an insert in your bulletin. That's where you track your attendance. You can write your name down. If you want to put your email down, we send out an email every Monday. Um, and it uh, gives you a list of what's happening and what's going on and how you can be involved. Uh, so make sure if you want to be included on the weekly email, you put your email on there. Uh, and to get ourselves uh, into a heart of worship, I want to share with you this morning Psalm 48. How great is the Lord! How deserving of praise! In the city of our God, which sits on his holy mountain, it is a high and magnificent the whole earth rejoices to see it. Mount Zion, the holy mountain, is the city of the great king. God himself is in Jerusalem's towers, revealing himself as its defender. The king of the earth joined forces and advanced against the city. But when they saw it, they were stunned. They were terrified and ran away. They were gripped with terror and writhed in pain like a woman in labor. You destroyed them like the mighty ships of Tarshish shattered by a powerful east wind. We had heard of the city's glory, but now we have seen it ourselves, the city of the Lord of heaven's armies. It is in the city of our God. He will make it safe forever. O God, we meditate on your unfailing love as we worship in your temple. As your name deserves, O God, you will be praised to the ends of the earth. Your strong right hand is filled with victory. Let the people on Mount Zion rejoice. Let all the towns of Judah be glad because of your justice. Go inspect the city of Jerusalem. Walk around and count the many towers. Take note of the fortified walls and tour all the citadels that you may describe them to future generations. For, what, for that is what God is like. He is our God forever and ever, and he will continue. He will guide us until we die. Amen. With that, we come to our time of praying together. Also, if you have a prayer request, you want to write it down, you can write it down. Um, we are live usually in the morning, so if you share something, it will go out <laughs> to whoever. Anybody have anything this morning? I do have some, but... I will say, um, continue to pray for Sarah Collins' stepmother. Uh, her cancer has returned. Uh, there is no known treatment for it, um, and she is now in trials of different, different things to see what works. So hopefully we'll continue to pray for that healing and that miracle to happen. Also continue to pray for Sharon Holsberry. Uh, she had surgery Friday. Uh, hopefully she is doing well. As of today, I don't know, but hopefully she's doing well. Uh, she's doing well. She's eating solid foods and tolerating so far. Some discomfort, but tolerating as well. She sends her appreciation for all our prayers. We'll be ho hospitalized for four to six days for recovery. So there you go. Yep. I don't know. Uh, I personally did not serve with the service. But I know there are some people here that have. Will those that have actually served please stand? And we thank you for your service. Anyone else this morning? It's pretty late. 
He didn't raise his hand very high. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, for those of you who went to Indian Lake last night, you saw an awesome fireworks display, one of the awesome ones was forever. However, it is not a very good place to get out of since they moved the launch site. And fireworks were over at 10.30 and we pulled in the driveway at 12.30. <laughs> I was already asleep, so I don't know what he's talking about. One lane <laughs> each way, one road, one lane. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing that there was 10,000 cars there. At least uh, it seemed like there was that many. So it was an awesome display, but it was terrible to get out of. Cool. <laughs> good and good and bad, all in one thing, right there. That's perfect. Anybody else this morning? Connie. Connie. I guess um, with Afghanistan and the government in our prayers, because I guess all of our troops are leaving this Friday, mm -hmm. and it doesn't sound good. So pray for courage and military power. <laughs> If I heard that correctly, you said troops leaving Afghanistan and Afghanistan itself. Also, don't forget to pray for our country and what we are facing and we're going through. Anybody else? Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Gracious and loving God, you showed us mercy when we did not deserve it, and you provided for your creation a way in which to be redeemed. That redemption does not come from a, a list of good deeds, checking the boxes in the, in the check boxes, the to-do list. That comes from the work of a Savior. That Jesus would choose to come to earth to bear the weight of sin and death, to die. A convicted, innocent man, crucified, dead, and buried. Who would then defeat sin and death. Ascend to heaven and sit at your right hand. That so when we spoke to you, you would hear us because of him. Our prayers are not lifted, are not spoken because of our great goodness. Our prayers are spoken in a certain hope that Jesus is the Messiah. He is our salvation and he is our truth. Because of him, you've been listening this morning. Uh, you've been listening to those that spoke out loud, and yet you've also listened to all of us. Whether we said something out loud or we didn't, you've been listening to us. You've been listening to us in conversation. You've been listening to us as we've spoken to each other and to you. You heard us as we asked you to, to be there with Sarah's stepmother and this cancer that has no known treatment, that you would be helpful, caring, and healing, and that you would provide in her comfort and hope. And we continue to pray that you would continue to, to work in the healing for our beloved Sharon Holsberry, that she would uh, continue to eat well, and even in discomfort, heal and feel better. And God, we pray for not just 
troops leaving Afghanistan, but our troops in general, who are faced with the, the task of attempting to bring democracy and freedom to people all across the world, including our own. God, we pray for our country that this division that is current will not stand or last as long as any other, and that you would continue to provide in us a hope to love one another as you first loved us, that if you're, this country indeed is founded and built upon your word and who you are, God, that we might have to do what you asked us to. God, we know that you are speaking to each of us as your Holy Spirit moves. And we take this moment of silence to just address you directly, that the thoughts and cares and things on our hearts are impressed upon you from us. Lord, hear our prayers. Hear the thoughts. Hear the hearts. Hear the confession. Hear the digging as we're seeking answers. Hear the, the lack of hope. Hear us as we reach out for you. And provide in us that which the world cannot give, an eternal home. God, we pray that you would continue to bless us, continue to help us, and continue to watch us as we grow. Guide us through our steps and keep us safe as we continue this journey. That we might not journey alone. That you might bring others alongside of us that we would know what it feels like to be in community. Together. And God, we pray you would open up our hearts to Jesus' teaching. That it was him who gave commands it was him who told us to love you. It was him who told us to love uh, it was him who told us to love others. It was him who told us to go into all the nations and to speak of your goodness. It's also this Jesus that taught us how we should pray and how we should believe. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Before we get too far, I know you're about ready to stand up, but if you have not grabbed a uh, communion uh, packet from the table on your way in, this is how we take communion right now. Um, this will change next month. So when you come next month, you will still have the option to take this at your seat like we do right now, but then you will also have an option to come forward and take communion from me. We're going to limit the, the offering, like there won't be people with cups and there won't be basket holders and it'll just be me. So I will, uh, I've already gotten my shot, so I should be good. I will sanitize as always and uh, even wear a mask if you need me to, but uh, you'll be able to come forward and take it in a normal fashion starting next month. So. Okay, looks like we're good. I'll move on to the next thing. If you are able and willing, stand and join us. We are going to recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, and he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you are willing to stand for the reading of Scripture, you can continue to stand. If you need to sit, you can sit, as I say all the time. I think God can speak to you whether you're standing or sitting. So today we're going to read from the book of Acts, chapter 2, kind of a, a piggyback off of what we did way back in Pentecost. And I'm going to read to you 42 through 47. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all. And the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day. They met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. So we want to welcome all of our guests, all of our friends who are with us, everybody who is joining us online. We welcome you as well. Uh, and uh, I'll start the way I usually do, but this time I have to say, how was your weeks? Not to be confused with the weeks is who are actually here, but how are your weeks of life? <laughs> usually I say week, but I can't say week because I haven't been here for a couple of those. It was good. It was good. Vacation was good. It was relaxing. Bad weather for most of it, but <laughs> we sat and watched it rain a lot, but it was all right. It was, it was good. It was relaxing. We had food. We had fun. Right? When we got there, they hadn't had much rain, so it was really dry. Like, the ground was even crunchy. And so I was like, well, I guess we caught it at the right time. But then we brought it with us, so that wasn't good. It followed us all the way from Michigan, so we needed it too, right? Things are looking pretty green out there, I have to say. So however your week was, uh, busy as it is right now, hopefully 4th of July festivities and things are happening for you and family members and loved ones and getting together. Uh, whatever it is, I hope that you have found place and carved out space for God. That is a, a paramount basic principle of faith that we would have time and space to make for God every day. In doing that, we open up what the Holy Spirit's trying to show us, what God is trying to teach us, and that we can find things that we need to repent from in order to experience the refreshing and restoring strength of God in our lives. Makes things better. It doesn't say it makes, thing, it makes the, the bad circumstances go away, but it gives us the tools and the ability to withstand. It's 4th of July, right? Man, I couldn't help but think about what the world would look like without a community of people that were believing in each other and wanting to have that freedom to express their faith however they wanted. What would have happened had those people not gotten together, had they not gotten the courage to do something crazy, like get on a boat and just go, right? What would have happened? It took a, it took a strong sense of that community, right? Right? And even when they got here, they had no idea what to expect. They had to start to learn how to live. And they had to be a family. Even since the beginning, in the book of Genesis, God, you know, Adam and Eve, once they fell from God's grace, they, had, they were tasked with multiplying and filling the earth. They were basically tasked with creating a family. We've been doing it ever since. Animals do it instinctively, don't they? Right? We don't have to tell them, hey, go have a family. Go raise each other. You know, go be each, each other's friends. 
right? We don't have to tell animals that. They do that. It's instinctive. We were sitting at, uh, uh, sitting in the, in the breezeway at the cottage in out back where the old golf course used to be. Uh, it's just kind of open land right now. It's probably going to be developed at some point, but right now it's just open land. And this family of wild turkeys would show up. Not every day, but almost every day. This big family of eight turkeys would just come strolling along, you know, having fun. And I'm like, man, if only you could discharge a firearm in the city limits. I mean, they look delicious. I think that was my, my, even my words that came out of my mouth. Man, they look delicious. They were huge. They were, I mean, the, the one big guy was probably, I don't, I'd have to hold him like this with both hands. He was huge. Like you could see him a far way off and think, man, what is that? Oh, that's that turkey. Holy cow. They were huge. And every once in a while we would get deer. Uh, this time of year, they're kind of, they tend to scatter a little bit more than they do because uh, they're, they're just, you know, foraging. But uh, you could see them everywhere, every so often, you know, little ones, big ones together, right? And I happened to start thinking this week as I kind of was rethinking all of this stuff, and I'm thinking about animals, and I'm thinking about families, and how this all works, and I thought, well, what about a porcupine? What about a porcupine, right? He's, oftentimes, when you find them in the, in the wilderness, they're alone. Well, they're hard to get in touch with, right? They're very stubborn. <laughs> sticky. Is that what somebody said? Sticky? They're very sticky. The animal, it seems like it would have a difficult time of building community, right? In the fall is when they, they tend to want to be together, if you know what I mean. It's that time of year, and I can't imagine how difficult that is. Right? Even just being together, I mean, they, they have quills, they can be painful, they can be even deadly, and, and they often just are alone. I can't imagine that the porcupine, though, really wants to be alone. There has to be some sense of desire for community and relationship within that at some point. So this passage that we find today— we have, to give, we have to give some depth to this. We have to give some, some background because it makes it sound like community is just really easy, right? Like, oh, hey, everybody just got together and they just shared their stuff and it was, everybody loved everyone. All I get is like a vision of a 70s commune somewhere out in California. Hey, man, right? That's not really how this was. It was hard. In fact, it was so hard that Jesus told the disciples, you are, I know you can't do this on your own. If you go out and do it on your own, you're going to fall on your face. So what I need you to do, I'm going to ascend to heaven to the Father right now, but I need you to stay here and wait. I need you to wait on the Holy Spirit, and then I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to you, and the Holy Spirit is then going to take you and make this all work. And so what we're seeing now is after that. They waited. Right? At Pentecost, we celebrated and talked about the, how the Holy Spirit came rushing through, right? And the wind blew through, and they all were talking in different languages and saying things and doing stuff that they weren't even sure what they were doing. And Peter gave this amazing message. And over 3,000 plus people were added to their, to their numbers that day. This is that journey of those people. How was it possible? Verse 42 lays out the, the, the how, or the what, if you will. In other words, what do I do? Because all the believers together, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, which is based off Jesus' teaching, right? And to the fellowship, which means hanging out together, even porcupines, and to the breaking of bread and of prayer. Now for them, breaking of bread, every time they were involved in breaking bread— or eating, it reminded them of Jesus because that's what Jesus told them to do. He took a regular meal, the Passover meal, right? Broke the bread, this is my body, drank the cup, this is my blood. Do this in remembrance of me every time you do this. So what happens? Well, you got to eat every day, right? If we want to stay alive anyway. So we eat. And when we eat, we break bread. If we do it together, we're celebrating communion. 
Does it always have to be here in this setting? Does it have to be with specific words? Does it have to be? Because uh, the Holy Spirit can move wherever that is. The rest of this, we can kind of break down into what was happening because of verse 42. So they started with devotion, right? They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Commitment is huge in this, in this community, right? When they were, they, they were coming together, there weren't any others like them. Matter of fact, there were people that did not like them. And over time, they would not be allowed to go back to the temple. Over time, they would be persecuted by the Romans. <clears throat> over time, Paul or, Sil or Saul of Tarsus would, in fact, even murder some of them because they believed. And so this was not always going to be an easy road. However, they did not want to take the word of God for granted. And they did not want to take fellowship, which is living the word of God together, for granted. And so we find what happened after they decided to do what was going on in verse 42. In verse 43, we find a sense of awe came over them. Some translations could say a sense of fear. Why? Because they were performing miraculous signs and wonders. That was what was drawing people in, was the miracle. The signs. The stuff, right? And so I was having a conversation uh, with one of the, the, the people from Maplewood, uh, Dwight Johnson. I don't know if you know Dwight. Dwight's got Parkinson's. Um, and he said, I don't know why people don't move anymore. He's like, you know, in the first church, it was the miracles. It was the miracles that were drawing people in. And then the teaching is what changed the community. And I said, well, basically what's going on is we don't recognize the miracles for what they are. We don't. We see it as part of life, or we see it as I got lucky, or we see it as, man, that doctor got to me just in time, or we see it as different than a miracle. We don't see it for what it is. Or we take that miracle and we think about it for a moment and then pff, we're on. We're off to something else. How many of you drove here today and were fortunate enough to have every car on the other side of the road pass by you without entering your lane? It's getting harder and harder to do, by the way. But that is faith. That is a miracle. Now, is it logic that that person wants to stay safe and you want to stay safe so you don't <laughs> run into each? Yes, that is logical, but it's still a miracle. It might be something simple, but it's something that we take for granted. These folks had nothing to take for granted. They devoted themselves to the teaching, and it's because they were also allowing the Holy Spirit to provide the signs and miracles in their lives. How many times do we want to just do it on our own, right? 44 says they all met together in one place. How fortunate are we as Americans that we can build churches and then we could come in and sit down and be together and worship a God that we believe in, right? Whatever way that is. They all came together in one place. Now, they didn't have their own temple. We see later that they went to temple every day, which was, as Jewish tradition, they would go for their time of prayer. Eventually, that would be taken away from them too. But they were together. They wanted to be together. There's a strength when you're together. There's uplifting when you're together. There's hope when you're together. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. Now, I do want to remind you they were not intentionally making themselves homeless so that somebody else could have the money. Right? We take, that, we take that as like, oh, I just sold everything and we all moved into this big giant estate. It's not really how that went. It depends on the translation that you read or the breakdown that you get from this, but they took their excess. So if they had more than one house, they sold one of them. I don't need it. If they had too many animals, they sold some of them. If they had too much land, they sold some of it. Why? Because it could benefit everybody if I did. 
And, and somebody uh, was talking to me, and we were working through this, and uh, said, well, that sounds a lot like socialism. I said, not really, because the government wasn't involved. Right? They were basically just a group of people that knew they, they had too much, and they could share what they had too much of so that everyone could benefit and, and feel loved. The other part is like just waiting on the government to take care of me. We've seen how that works out with the stimulus checks, right? It's nice, but I don't have to pay that back. And if I don't want to, I don't have to give it to anybody either, do I? How many of us tithe our stimulus checks? Ooh, that's a tough one. <laughs> We've had that conversation. They worshiped every day at the temple, right? They go to the temple. They meet in each other's homes for the Lord's Supper, and they shared their meals with great joy and generosity. How many of you have had uh, experienced over this weekend-ish, or maybe today, tomorrow, you're going to have family together, and you're going to have a cookout, or you're going to do something together? How much fun is that? It's a good time. I remember uh, Cody's graduation party, and, and that was the first time in like a long time when we had a lot of family and a lot of friends all together in one place. You know, because of COVID and all those things, we hadn't really had that many people together in over a year. It was almost two years. And just to have that, all of those people together in one place, it was such a great day. That was every day for these people. They loved each other. They shared everything. They ate together. They loved together. And while all this was happening, if you get to verse 47, while all this was happening, they were praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. The Lord added to their fellowship every day those who were being saved. Every day. Can you imagine that? Every day. Every day. Every day. We read that, and it sounds really simple, right? Hey, that's it, right? Just take care of each other. Just love each other. Just eat together. It sounds really simple, but that's not really how it works, right? Okay, every day this week, we're going to meet here at 6 o'clock for dinner. Can everybody make that? Sure. You see what I mean, though, right? You gonna make every day? <laughs> I understand. Well, I understand that. But what else is happening? Right? Life happens. It's true. But we get into this spot where we don't. We understand that this isn't as easy as they say. It's also even harder when we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to be a part of it and driving it and moving it. It makes it even more difficult when we're trying to understand that, you know, maybe there's part of us that wants to be alone. And don't get me wrong, there is good that can come from being alone for a time. But I don't expect ever that I will get fortified, I'll get nourished, I'll get loved, I'll get cared for when I'm alone. Ask our porcupine friend, right? Being alone is not where we are engaged. It's not where we feel fulfilled. It's not where we are used to the potential that God has called us to be used. But by building community, we have to also understand that we are not giving things up. We're sharing. I started thinking about that, and I thought about the free sale. Right? We do that every year. Last year we couldn't, and this year we're getting ready to do it again. And we're going to open up our doors, and this space that you're sitting in is going to be full of clothes, stuff, you name it, and anybody that wants it can come get it. That's part. That is what this church looked like. Now, we could just do that every day, right? <laughs> That's hard to do, especially on, the, especially on that level. I see Sue over there. She's like, oh, I don't want to do that every day. <laughs> But these people, they weren't simply dropping food off at a food pantry. They were the food pantry. They were together, and they weren't just like handing things to people. No, they were like, hey, come over. We're going to eat. So you come over, and you eat together, and you share together. 
breaking of the bread is where Jesus said that we would find the power and strength of the Holy Spirit. At some point, we're going to have to have a conversation about getting that second Sunday carrying back, right? Breaking of the bread is where we are found to be in communion with God, in communion with each other, and the Holy Spirit is there as well. What happens when we start living a life that looks like that is we find out that, that God is worthy. We find ourselves praising God and being in a, enjoying a goodwill, enjoying each other's company, enjoying each other's presence. The first century church and the depiction of it is all hinged upon two things. One, allowing the Holy Spirit to move, which means not denying it when he tells you to do something. And then the people who listened and loved and cared for each other like they were family. Now, I know family for all of us is not always, you know, the best words that we want to use. We may not have had a good family experience. And some of us have had a good family experience, and even then there's trials and there's struggles, right? This family is different. This family is eternal. This family is not temporary. This family does things that the others won't. It's what makes it attractive in the first place, right? How many people come to church just because the chairs are comfortable? How many come because they really enjoy the music? How many come because the carpet's a cool shade of gray? No, you come because there are other people here that you love and you like and you care for and you share in life with. That's what brings us here. And as I say that, Steve's over here picking up Elliot off the floor. Right? That's family. The building of loving a, uh, the building of a loving and a community that cares is what drove this early church to thrive and to be successful. All they were doing was doing the things that Jesus had asked them to do in the first place. The apostles' teachings? <laughs> Jesus' teachings. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your spirit. Love your neighbor as yourself. And they even took the, the, the Great Commission seriously. It wasn't just the apostles that were doing the Great Commission. It was everybody that came in. Take this good news to the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them everything I've commanded you. That's why this was growing. This was the early church. It was loving, it was caring, and it was painful. And it was great, and it's why they grew and grew and grew. Are we ready to be a church like that? Are we ready to build community that looks like that? I think if you watch, if you watch as you go to the park on a Wednesday and see the lunches that are being made and handed out, the way churches are working together in that process, this is kind of that community. It doesn't always look like it. And we've obviously got our porcupines. Some of us are here now. But that is what the church should look like. Can we love without condemnation and provide for each other out of love? I hope so. Amen. Join me as we pray over our offering. Great and loving God, you have given us a chance to see what you've provided for us. You give, and we take. Our offering is not to be a means of salvation, but it should be a means of grace, a means by which we experience you, and we love you, and we want other people to know that too. And so as we respond to your word this morning, God, we give back to you whether it's money, time, energy, talents, gifts, whatever we can bear, whatever we can let loose, whatever we have enough of, we give it back to you. And we ask you to bless it. 
to multiply it and to make it grow. That the world around us and our community would see you as a God that loves them, who wants and desires them, and who is going to be here long after all of this fades. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus, who makes it possible, and with the strength, guidance, and wisdom of your Holy Spirit that is in our midst now. Amen. As we come to communion, uh, I'm going to do my best to read from that far away with my contacts in. <laughs> the shortened service of word and table. It's one that in which we can experience that. Um, I will alert you ahead of time. Uh, if you've got one of these without the bread in it, you'll need the wafer and then the juice. And there's two levels to that plastic, right? There's a purple thin piece at the top, and then the whole thing comes off on, on a head. 1 John 4, 7 and 9 says, Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. Join me in this opening prayer. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church, and we have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were still sinners. That proves God's love toward us. And in the name of Jesus, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now we're going to alternate back and forth. I know it's hard to see, but you can alternate back and forth. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Thanks and praise. It is a right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. And so, as the Passover feast and the night in which Jesus would be betrayed by Judas would come, Jesus would take the Passover feast and change it forever. And he took the bread during the middle of the feast, and he lifted it to heaven, and he thanked his Father for it, and he broke it. And as he broke it, he told them, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. And likewise, he took the final cup of the night, 
he lifted it to heaven and he blessed it. And he thanked his father for it. And as he handed it to them, he said, this is my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins for many and for you. This is my blood of a new covenant between you and God. As often as you drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. And so friends, you have with you your delicious packet of communion. And if you have a piece of bread in yours, you may take it out. If you have the wafer, you may take it out. It's always Christ's body. Even when you go home today, you're going to remember this. Every time you break bread, there he is. This is Christ's body given for you. Take and eat. Likewise, we have blood of Christ. <laughs> At some point, I'm going to Capri Sun these things and stick a straw in it. This is the, bo- the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink. you join me in a word of prayer? Father in heaven, we are grateful. We are grateful that you have called us into this family. That because of the mighty acts of your son Jesus, sacrificing his body, shedding his blood for us, we are adopted into this family and called your sons and daughters. We are forever grateful for the work. We're grateful for the grace, and we're hopeful for eternity. God, we pray that you would forgive us this day. Allow us to rise from this place filled with your Holy Spirit, ready to move, ready to create, ready to be, not just in love with you, but in love with our neighbors, loving and caring for each other the way you have provided and cared for us. Jesus makes this possible, and it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Go forth in peace. Is this, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. If you are able, please stand and join us in our closing hymn. We're going to sing A Marriage of the Beautiful.
And so, you thought there was going to be no more porcupine talk, but there is. Did you know the North American common porcupine is a member of the rodent family? It's actually a rat, which, man, a rat with quills is even worse. Each quill, over 30,000 of which he has on his body, can be driven into an enemy. The enemy's body heat will then cause the microscopic barb to expand and become even more firmly embedded. This can fester, it can be dangerous, and even can affect vital organs and be fatal. Porcupines, though, they don't always want to be alone. I said in late autumn, a young porcupine's thoughts turn to love. But fear and anger make them dangerous little creatures to be around. This is the porcupine's dilemma. How do you get close without getting hurt? And this is our dilemma too. It's okay to love people even if they're porcupines because they have quills that won't hurt you. It's okay. Friends, I hope you have a great and blessed 4th of July and have a safe celebration the next couple of days, and we'll see you next week. God bless.